Now, there will be a lot of overreactions and, and some underreactions to what Aaron Rodgers did yesterday going to the Jets. But I'm going to say it. In my opinion now, the New York Jets are legitimate Super Bowl contenders. And apparently, they're also friends of the darkness, as Aaron Rodgers has decided to join the flight crew going into 2023. Now, I would be willing to bet that the Jets will try and find him more weapons. That's somewhat obvious. But having Garrett Wilson, Lazard, McCole Hardman, and Corey Davis isn't a horrible start. You have a nice backfield with a hopefully fully healthy Brees Hall and a defense that would make Alcatraz shiver. Now, for those who think Aaron Rodgers' best days are behind him, his play doesn't really back up that theory. And let's not act like the Packers were overloaded with weapons either. Now, the most important aspect of, the, of this whole ordeal is now Rodgers doesn't have to be Batman. Hell, he just needs to be a solid Robin. He doesn't need to score 35 consistently to win games. He can rely on someone else to come through in clutch moments. When they need a stop or a turnover, they could actually get one. Now, this also makes the AFC East even deadlier. And if Tua can stay healthy, which is a big if, this division of quarterbacks is incredibly nice. Now, some people will say that the New York spotlight will be bad for Aaron, and maybe so when it comes to PR. But when it comes to football, he still has enough witch in him to win another MVP and Super Bowl. Now, I never thought I would see, I would never thought I would say, see the day when the Jets and the Giants look so stable, but here we are. And that's not even mentioned in the Knicks. They're going to win a playoff series. And to all the Jets fans who feel like their time will never come, buckle up because there's a new sheriff in town, and he's about to discount double-check everybody in the league. Boom. I'm going to bring in my co-host, Michigan quarterback. Discount double-check. And son-in-law of Richard Todd, another famous Ooh, Jets quarterback. Yes. Jets. And my brother, Jets. Blaine Crane, former Western State Collar wide receiver. And he's a dragon on Fridays. We, we felt like this was coming, right? Everybody, it was almost a matter of God. when, not if. I'm, we're, a lot, everybody's glad the saga's over. Okay, we're glad the saga's over. It finally happened. It blew the internet up yesterday. But when you really dig down into the numbers, and, and at first when I saw it, I was like, man, I feel like the Jets kind of got fleeced in this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I went back and looked at it. Okay, and if, if, if you look at, at what, you're getting Aaron Rodgers. Okay, this isn't 60-year-old, I'm going around in a wheelchair that's, that's help, I help move with a joystick, Aaron Rodgers. This guy can still do it, okay? The Jets last year, that there's a stat that just will blow your mind. WPA, okay? We're not trying to, to find what internet to connect your phone to. This is an advanced metric that measures how many games your offense helped you or hurt you. Mm -hmm. Last year, the New York Jets, out of 17 games, eight of them, the offense helped instead of hurt, okay? So the, so the other nine, the offense hurt the team instead of helping them. The Jets went seven and one in those eight games. Mm. Now that was with, you know, who done it at quarterback, not Aaron Rodgers. So they don't have to be a great offense to have a chance to win the whole thing. They need to have a good offense. So when you look at the trade value, getting Aaron Rodgers automatically makes you better. It makes guys want to come and play, play the skill position there more. It's going to increase that WPA, which is going to increase wins. And the defense could be even better than last year. Then you look at the picks, okay? You give up the number 13 this year. You've got the 15th. All right. You get a couple more picks and a compensatory, a compensatory pick where it's a second rounder. But if Aaron Rodgers plays 65% of the snaps, it becomes a first round pick. I don't think the Jets got fleeced in this. I think this trade's a lot more even than what people are saying. David, what's your instant reaction to it? Well, no one can question the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. I think he's the most accurate passer in the history of football. Um, I think the Packers you know, wanted to be done with him. He was creating just distractions from my perspective. I mean, he, Aaron Rodgers is eccentric, and eccentricity is not always a quality you think of when you think of the quarterback position. But make no mistake, he can still win at the highest level. Now you put him in New York with that defense, I do think that they could be Super Bowl contenders. And Vegas agrees. Uh, the Jets jumped into the top six here. Their odds to win the Super Bowl are at plus 1,400. The only problem, three of those teams above them are in the AFC. So you have the Chiefs, the Bills are in the AFC East, 
and the Bengals. So I think these odds are about right. Uh, as far as who got fleeced, I love that the term fleeced has now just, you know, the common parlance, mm. you know, has entered. You know when that term gets thrown around, someone got traded yeah. in some sport or another. You know, when I was looking at it, I thought, the Jets got the better end of the deal to get a Hall of Fame quality quarterback. And, uh, you know, with the Packers not getting a lot in return for him. But then I thought, you know, Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to be there. That's the problem. So if Aaron Rodgers, who's a 38 year, 38 year old quarterback, doesn't want to be in Green Bay anymore, then it's probably best for you to get as much as you possibly can, which they've been trying to get for the past few weeks, and move on. So, like you said, the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, they get the 15th pick in the first round, and they get the fifth round pick. The Packers get the 13th pick, a second rounder, which is the 42nd, and then a six round pick. Uh, a six-round pick this year, and then next year's second round, which turns into a first-round pick if Aaron Rodgers plays over 65% of the snaps uh, for the Jets. So essentially, you just swap first-round picks. The fifth and the sixth, you move up one round, but it's basically a swap. So you get this year's second and next year's second, which becomes a first if Aaron Rodgers plays a lot. But if Aaron Rodgers plays a lot for the Jets, they're probably going to do good. Yeah. So it's closer to a second-round pick anyway. Again, Look, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to be there, you have to just get as much as you possibly can and move on and move on from him. I don't think either team really. I think they got what they wanted. Jets needed one <coughs> quarterback, right? And first of all, let's you know, let's just not forget that Aaron played 18 years at the Packers. Uh, you're never going to see Aaron Rodgers in the Packers uniform again. So I mean, if you're a Packers fan, this has to be a little sour and sweet at the same time. But it comes down to longevity if you're the Jets with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, if Aaron goes there and plays one to two years and dips out, I mean, this is a loss. I mean, the Packers, I mean, what, you save $60 million in cap space? I mean, you you get uh, a first-rounder and a, um, maybe a second-rounder, but probably ends up being another first-rounder, in my opinion, if he plays. Is it, if he plays more than 65, it's a first-rounder or less than 65? More than 65. More than 65. So you guys, it's another first-rounder. And the Packers, you wanted to get rid of him. Do I believe in love at quarterback? No, I do not. But a team that did win, right, in multiple teams, right? The Bears. Thank God he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> right? The Lions. Yeah. Yes. Right, uh, the Vikings. Here we go. Right, Aaron's always just a thorn in these teams' sides. So it's good for that division. I think Aaron. I think right now the Jets. The Jets have one, if not the best, defense when it comes. Well, fully healthy, give me the 49ers. But one of the best defenses in the NFL. You put Aaron Rodgers with that, and if you're thinking they're going to still have that first round pick, they're probably going to go after a receiver in the first round if I'm the Jets. Get another piece of put with Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall coming back from the ACL. The offensive line is obviously the biggest question when it comes to the Jets. But you do have a guy, Aaron, who's even older in age, who stills a witch when it comes to inside the pocket, stepping up and getting that extra time to extend the play and throw it down the receivers. So if I had to pick a winning team out of this trade, I'd pick both. Like I'd pick both at the end of the day because yeah. each team got what they wanted. Yeah, I just <clears throat> it, I'm just shocked. I, I'm not shocked, but it's funny that it takes this long for y'all to both like. It, there wasn't some groundbreaking. We're getting two first rounders, mm -hmm. and there there wasn't like well, whatever push and pull there was. It seems like they just got to the point where they're like, let's just get the deal done. Let's just get it done. Uh, speaking of Jackie Schaefer, you know him and Kenny Powers sitting in the dealership. I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks. Now, when we talk about Aaron Rodgers and longevity. I think he's going to play for a little bit longer than what people are thinking. I, I think this fresh start is going to be a good thing. But if the Jets win a Super Bowl in the next two or three years, screw the first-round pick. You got everything you wanted in that. It's just giving yourself that opportunity. I mean, hell, just make the playoffs if you're the Jets compared to what it's been. Now, David, you brought up how good the AFC is, and I agree with you. But here's my question. Would you rather have to, in a playoff format, where your side only plays the other side in the championship game or the Super Bowl or whatever you want to call it. Would you rather have to deal, it's like the NCAA tournament argument. Would you rather play the number one seed in the second round and then it'd be easier at the end? Would you rather have to beat one or two of those teams in the AFC where it's tougher and then in the Super Bowl you get to play against a weaker team? Or would you rather go through a weaker side and have to play a really, really good team from the better side in the championship. See, game. it's really interesting, and we were talking about this just a few months ago when the Super Bowl was happening in the NFL playoffs. I don't see one side uh, in in the NFL being weaker than the other. What's different is actually, I think the NFC teams are stronger in totality. When you look at a team like the Eagles, very, very balanced team. The 49ers, very balanced team. It's the quarterbacks in the AFC that sort of make up for that. Yeah. We thought, you know, when you looked at the Eagles and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, the Eagles 
just in terms of an overall team, had all these, you know, every position shored up basically with excellence. But the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, you know, and you're going to run into Josh Allen with the Bills. And you're going to run into Joe Burrow with the Bengals. So it's like not only do you have to make your way through this gauntlet of great quarterbacks in the AFC, which now the Jets do have so they can be formidable when it comes playoff time, but whoever the NFC puts forward in the Super Bowl, you're going to have to play a really good team. I mean, the Eagles are now talking about possibly getting Derrick Henry, Henry from the Titans. I mean, don't think that Jalen Hurts, who just signed that contract, and after he signed the contract said, yeah, the money's great, but all I want's a championship. Don't think they're not coming, too. No, for, uh, they've got it cooking over there in Philly. But tell us in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. Who do you think won the trade? Do you think was even somewhat like we think? And do you think the Jets are going to win a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers? Hey, YouTube, appreciate you guys checking us out. If you just found us or maybe you've been watching all the breakouts and you're like, man, I wish these guys had a show that I could watch consistently. Well, it turns out you may be the luckiest man in the world outside of me because I'm getting married soon. Or maybe that's the opposite. But we do a live show every weekday morning, 7.30 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Come join us. We take live calls. We have live guests. We interact with the chat and we're talking about everything in sports. It's a great time. So come check us out live.